and we're back with another episode okay all right y'all welcome back to another episode of the face off of fleming and fowler we are back at it again did you miss us because we missed you we did thank you guys for uh, your patience yet again uh we had a little hiatus because it was much needed anyway um we are back how was your week this past week my week was weekend weekend oh, yeah, yeah, my yeah. week was weeking it's good i feel good that is awesome. I like turned a corner. I don't know if I've told you the good news about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He is present in my life. Mm -hmm. Um no, the even better news, even better okay. than being washed in the blood, is that I started taking black seed oil consistently. Okay. And I don't know if I was just deprived of every nutrient in my body or um Yes, because you don't eat. Yeah, so that's probably what it was. But I haven't taken my Vivance in like two three weeks mm -hmm. uh my energy is wait 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 wait. that's a huge wait, 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 wait. i know you haven't taken your vivance swear to god i took it one day because i was constipated and that's the only thing that'll help me go to the bathroom which Jesus. is a whole nother story but i haven't been taking it because i've been my energy has been so good and my concentration has been so much better which proves you don't need the methamphetamines. <laughs> well, I wouldn't go or is it just far. the phetamines what is it is I, just I don't the know i also haven't been <laughs> challenged quite like I used to be like for eight hours a day, but, oh, that's um, cool. yeah, isn't that crazy? Yeah. So look into black seed oil. It could be the thing for you. I feel my, like my appetite has changed. I'm not like, cause usually when I take the vitamins, I'm never hungry. It's like, yeah. I don't even think about food. And then when I'm off it, I'm like rabid, like mm -hmm. I'm starving, but I, I just have like, I don't know. I feel like my blood sugar is more regulated. My appetite is. This is the first time you probably had nutrition. Yeah. <laughs> in a very long I don't know time. what's in that fucking bottle, but it's like a miracle. <laughs> what what no don't don't give a uh, I was gonna say don't I don't give, give a, a brand. brand. The one yeah. I have though is pretty common and it has like MCT oil and vitamin D. I heard MCT oil is really good. Yeah, and yeah. It, and I just my inner because you know how like that after lunch slump. Like, I get a 2 p.m. slump where all my energy is dead, and I'm like, I do not know how I'm going to continue. It depends on what I eat, mm. honestly. Yeah, so th I don't get that, like, 2 p.m. crash, like, the hard mm -hmm. crash anymore. Mm -hmm. I kind of just stay pretty level, but it's been good. So That's awesome. We are up. We are at them. I feel great. You're up and it's stuck. I love that. Blessed and highly favored, and we're just going to ride out the rest of the year. The year's going by crazy fast. It's already almost fucking... First of all, it's tripping me out that um, Thanksgiving is the 28th this year. I don't know why. I'm used to it being like the 24th. Really? Yeah. So that's when I was growing up, it was also going on the 27th and 26th. Oh, okay. Well, that's throwing me off. And then also, <laughs> I can't believe it's already, today's the 17th when we're recording this. Yeah. The month is basically over. It really is. And it's still fucking 80 degrees outside, which is insane. 7 p.m. Friday, 9 And degrees. it's getting, it's dark at like 3 p.m. It truly. This is the one, like, I love the whatever extra hour. It's not really an extra hour. It's still 24 hours in a day. Anyway, the point <laughs> being is that I, Thankfully, I don't have to cut my grass anymore. I think. I hope. Hopefully not. Um, but I'm like, if I wanted to, I wouldn't be able to anyway. Because by the time no. I get damn home, it's, it's dark. Well, and it's like 60, 50 to 60 degrees in the morning. And then it's still hot as shit exactly. in the afternoon. I don't know. We're, we've been getting some breezes, which is nice. Yeah. I mean, whatever storms are brewing. There's a, I think there's a hurricane that's brewing in the sea somewhere. Again? Yeah. So well, hurricane awesome. season isn't over until the end of November. Damn. So you got to get one last one out. You know? Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. How was your week? Uh, my week was pretty traumatizing, but also it was cool. Um, <laughs> Y'all, here's the thing. Um, there's a, I, well, I'll say this first. Uh, we went over our, my natal chart. Remember we were talking about we did. how, uh, you know, Fowler was going to go over my natal chart and all this kind of stuff with regard to astrology. Now, I believe in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hey. However, but just because you believe in Jesus Christ does not, does not mean that you cannot dabble in astrology. They're, okay, The three wise men, what were they? Th thank astrologers. You. And they, they used the, the North Star. Some star up there to They used the North Star. Thank There's you. astrologers all throughout the Bible. Thank you. You know, so anyway, we were talking about this natal chart and everything and all this retrograde and micro braids and shit. And uh, I found out some very interesting stuff about myself. A lot of bullshit, but, <laughs> and the bullshit is basically everything kept saying, oh, you thrive in professional spaces and medical and helping people this, out. And I'm like, this shit was basically like, you would need to be a physical therapist. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> and I'm like, how do we, how do we erase this? The how do planet we said, this? we heard you talking a lot of shit on that little podcast you have, <laughs> but you're your PT. Oh my beard. And I'm just like, I'm steadily trying to get out of the profession. It was so funny. I had a patient, um, this 22 year old uh, young lady who um, ended up having a 
she ended up having seizures. They thought she had a stroke, but she was having seizures. Anyway, and she asked her, she said, like, oh, my God, I'm so, like, happy to see you. And I was like, nobody ever says that about a physical yeah. therapist. And so I was like, so. And when you, yeah. they do, it's trouble. Yeah, but she would, no, she was an amazing patient. And she basically said to me, she was like, yeah, you know, I really want to go into physical therapy. And so I just, you know, I have a mask on, obviously, mm-hmm. at work, so you can't really see my face. And so um, I was like, oh, that's awesome. You know, that's, that's great. You should pursue whatever you want to do. And so she was like, no, can you really give me the real rap raw about your profession? Oh, no. And I just told her, I said, don't do it. I told her, she was like, oh, no, you're not giving me very good confidence. I was like, I'm not trying to. I said, do you want the nice answer, the professional answer, or do you want the real answer? She's like, no, 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 I want the real answer. I said, absolutely not. Don't do it. I said, go to perfusion school. Yeah. Yeah, but anyway, um, or those people now, because you know, there's so many jobs in medicine that you don't even know about. Yeah, now that job is going around where they're the people. Well, I don't even know what the fuck they're called, but the, the people who do all the like um, equations and things for chemo, mm. and they make a bunch of money and they're helping people, but they're just it's like zero patient interface. All they're doing is like all the calculations and stuff for the chemo drugs themselves that are administered, like the, the mixing and all that kind of right. stuff, titrations right. and stuff. Yeah, I feel like I make a bag of death, so I don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's don't, already poison. How that gonna yeah, be? Yeah, I don't. Nah, I, nah, I'm just saying. But they I say they have that. they have really good job satisfaction. It's just like you know. Yeah, I want. I mean, I wouldn't mind something in healthcare that's very limited patient interaction. If it's like one patient, I'm cool with that. Yeah, you know, but. Um, yeah, no, I just don't want to do this profession anymore. And I just told her, I was like, I said, you can't ask me because I'm burnt out. Yeah, because I'm the wrong person to ask. I'm the wrong person to ask because I am a burnt out PT. I love, I love the patients. The patients have never been the issue. Sometimes they are. I'll tell you about that later on. But, um, sometimes, a lot of times they're not the problem. It's administration and other things, reimbursement, which is continues to get cut and whatnot. And the return on investment is horrible. However, that's my strife, not y'all's. Anywho, and I don't let it affect my quality of care, of patient care. Because, you, go. you know, I have a license to maintain, okay, if you didn't know. You got a anyway, mortgage to pay. Listen, I got a baby. There is a many of things that have hit me in 2024, okay? Oof. 2025 is my year. There it is. Okay? Let's I'm preach that. It. I feel good about this one. Listen, it, it got to be. <laughs> it got to be. But other than that, um, yeah, my week has been really cool. Um, uh, I'm just ready for Thanksgiving. I'm really ready for Thanksgiving, and I'm really pissed off that people are putting Christmas lights up. I just, I oh, hate. Oh, the Christmas is in full fucking swing. I just need Mariah Carey. You need to take your ass back on ice because it is not time. It's not time. It's time. It's when did not. they start doing that? What? It's time. I, I'm I'm not sure. What did you say? I can't hear you. Say so. Excuse me. Excuse me. Um, I think TikTok. You know, they love to use these. You know, uh, viral sounds and stuff yeah. like that. But yeah, no, it's not time. It's a time to be thankful and. Um, I think we skip over Thanksgiving a lot, and I'm because so- there's no holidays have music. Thanksgiving has no music. Halloween doesn't have music either. Yes, they got it like does. Two or three Monster songs. Mash. It's more than Thanksgiving has. It's like five songs. All right, well, does I sung count. a Thanksgiving song before. What is it? Oh, give thanks <laughs> unto the Lord for He is good. Yes, He is good. That's a Thanksgiving song. <laughs> oh, give thanks. <laughs> it's a Thanksgiving song. That sounds like um. A sitcom opening song. Step by yeah, step, you better sounds. give thanks. I, all I'm saying is, uh, give thanks, you ungrateful bastards. God dog. There are a lot of um, Thanksgiving advocates out there that are really upset with the I'm upset. capitalism that's pushing Christmas forward. Listen, I'm very proud and happy that one of my neighbors in my neighborhood has a six-foot turkey outside. Oh, nice. And it's lit up every single night, and I want to put mine out there. I just can't find it. Oh, how do you do that? Well, because I cleaned out my garage. Got it. And I folded it all up and put it back in its box, but my storage is out there. I I can't. I I can't find it. And I don't have the bandwidth to go in. I think it's not Thanksgiving's fault. It's not Christmas' fault. It's whoever, like, sandwiched all these holidays back to back to back. Capitalists. Yeah. That's whose fault it is. If we had, like, a month and a half between each of them, I think that would be better. No, because then we wouldn't have as many days off for, you know. That's true. Yeah, I I need to be able to have Beggars can't be choosers. Exactly. And plus, I'm excited to be able to cook. What are you doing for Thanksgiving? Oh, my Lord. This is, boy, buckle up. This is the (laughs) first Thanksgiving where I will not have to drive three and a half hours. Oh, that's awesome. To spend the weekend with my family. That's awesome. Because we're all in the same town. Praise the Lord, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Um, So, but now we're just like, there's all these activities and things, which I'm not mad about. I love my family. I love spending time with them. Very excited. I love how you have to give a disclaimer once you say that. I love them. They're my favorite people. I see my family extended parts of my family every week usually it's like friday i see my nana saturday i see my grandpa mm-hmm. 
Um, and I've been seeing my aunt a lot because now she lives in town. I love that woman. That's cool. Um, but so they like, we're playing, we're having like a sand volleyball day. We're going to go to the zoo because now we have a baby in the family. And then um, we usually do Saturday. We usually eat Thanksgiving on Saturday night, but we're pushing it up a day. So we're going to eat on Friday because Texas is playing A&M Saturday. And that's a big thing. So we're going to have a party. watch the game or just watch We're it? having a watch party. If you'd like to come, come on down. Cool beans. Hook them horns. Go horns. Go horns go. Um, but yeah, so it's going to be a fun week. There's a lot going on. Yeah, because fam, you lost their last whole game. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. Texas, it's okay, though. Long Texas has Bethune. been doing all right. We're going to keep the faith. Oh, cool. But yeah. You're going to be here for Thanksgiving. Yes, I'm going to be here for Thanksgiving, and I'm going to cook. Um, I always cook for Thanksgiving, honestly. I don't care whether or not I'm around my family or not. You know what it is? This year, um, I have my boundaries are firm, and so I am choosing not to be around my family on purpose. That's so, so nice that you mm-hmm. can do that. Yeah. I, I'm, I, think I mean that. It's much easier, too, because they're not in town. Even That's if they true. were, <laughs> but even if they were, I would not go. Um, I'm in a season in my life where... Um, I am detaching and I am, you know, um, ridding and shedding and whatnot. Decentering. Yes, I'm decentering the bullshit. And so um, yeah. I, as a grown adult, don't have to be around you. And I could, I know how to cook everything I like for the most part. And um, I like my peace. And so yeah. I like being able to just wake up on Thanksgiving. Well, actually, for me, I start Thanksgiving on Wednesday and I always, you know, uh, prepare and cook some of my stuff and then finish it on Thursday, like the old school way. I like doing that and just being able to pick out, mm-hmm. watch what I want to watch, walk around my house in some booty shorts and a sports bra and just enjoy the night. Well, if you, you want know? some chaos, please feel free to come on down. I'm thinking about trying to invite myself to this sand volleyball. Hey, you can come. When is this? Don't tell me on, on air. Okay, tell me we'll on talk day. about it later, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. but man, you haven't been around. I still haven't met Fowler's mom That's yet, even true. though we've had a podcast for the past like four fucking years. I don't think you've been around enough white people at the same time lately. And what do you so... mean? My half, Most of my patients are white. <laughs> oh, that's true, because you're over there. <laughs> I'm a whole physical therapist. You need some unhinged caucasity in your life. Yeah, as long as they don't talk about the, the election, I'm cool with that. Well, just come. Well, I, can, I can talk about the election. It's yeah, no, they're fine. It's fine. And your family's fine. They're they, fine. What's two blacks? You know? What's, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They don't see and you. They're used they don't to even me. see me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, half of us. It's just like. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know the relatives that like. Not in a bad way, but they're talking about shit that I'm like, I don't even know what you're talking about. What you're talking like where <laughs> yes. what how to even interact with this conversation because yes. I'm like, you're talking about things that are like six paces off of what everybody yeah. on Twitter's talking about. And I only have the TikTok version. Yeah. So I can't engage with this. Yeah, definitely. They're like, but don't you know the the da 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 da? I'm like, why Did the fuck hear? would I know that? Well, cause you know what it is, it's cause we're in the medical field. And so I always get these questions that you know, Thanksgiving and Christmas or whatever family gatherings. Did you hear about that person who, you know, this vaccine and this, this, mm-hmm. and I'm just like, okay, I work in healthcare. I yeah. don't want to talk about it if I'm not being paid to talk True. about it. Even though we're on a podcast talking about it. We're not <laughs> about it. It's but very still, different. It's very this different. Is this is catharsis. Yeah, and this is therapeutic. So this is our venting diary, you know, yeah. our virtual diary. But um, yeah, I don't want to hear about what you heard. I don't want to have to try to diagnose you because I, I, that's not in my practice act. But also, too, don't come to me. Well, it hurts when I do this. Well, don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I'm refusing to, you know. Just yeah. The other day. So one of my friends, his wife is pregnant and my family was having a we were watching the game the other day. They were over. And this poor girl, I've known her since high school, but my she got stuck with my Nana. I don't even know what the fuck they were talking about. <laughs> And I just looked over and I was like, I just don't have the energy to do it. It's, yeah. You got to You got to take this one. Yeah. And I appreciated that. I have a cousin that does that. She, she is very special. She's special to somebody, <laughs> not to me, but she's special to somebody. And who knows if she listens to the podcast? I don't care. Now you know how I really feel about you. Anywho, um, and she comes up with some of the most insane topics of conversation <laughs> And literally, you will have to run away from her because she, you just, you'll be like, who, who raised you? Wolves? What, what the hell is going on in your brain? Like, I just want to see an x-ray, like, vision of your brain. And it's probably just a half of a marble just rolling around in there. Yeah. It, oh, every, so, every family has that one. Yeah. And that's the fun part about the holidays. So for, like, five years, my family could not catch a break on Thanksgiving. Everyone decided 
each year they were going to show up and outdo the the next one. There were pregnancies and engagements. and <laughs> I love that. I, so I'm just like, this year, nope, we're not doing it. No yeah. one's allowed. We're not making any special announcements. We're yeah. not bringing any special people. If you're not fucking engaged or married, don't bring them <laughs> unless they're a friend of the family and you're not having sex with them. We're not doing it. That's very specific. I'm so tired. <laughs> and I'm also tired of having to spend an extended amount. Because usually we're stuck. Not stuck. We're together for a weekend. Absolutely. And you love it. And I I do love it. But I'm like, I'm tired of investing all this time and energy into people. And they're not even fucking there the next year. Exactly. So that's, that was my thing. I mean, my family thinks I'm probably crazy, but I've just been on a war path. Yeah. I mean, it's all, it's always to like the newer family member that tries to bake stuff or make stuff. For I'm the like, family. it's like that's we've not got a it part down. of our staple. Like that's not. No. Stop trying to infiltrate new family. If you're the yeah. new person coming in to an established family holiday, just go and be nice and do what they ask. Bring you the to sodas. Do. Bring the sodas. Yeah, bring maybe one dessert, but not a dessert that everything's hinged on. Like, don't bring. I don't know. Pumpkin pie is probably safe. Uh, not in a black household. That's true. Honestly, just show up with something. Like maybe a bottle bring of wine. Bring utensils, you know, yeah. uh, uh, styrofoam cups or plates yeah. and stuff like that. To-go plates, and you know. And just sit there, smile, yeah. speak when spoken to. Exactly. Don't bring up politics unless asked. Yeah. Don't don't try to center yourself in yeah. somebody else's family. Like I, I, there was a person who did that in our family. I won't I won't gender them, but <laughs> they did that, and um, we we hated this person. Yeah, we, we still do. Well, and it's, <laughs> and just it's just so, like you're trying too I've hard. I've never understood the idea of walking into, especially large families, and just mm-hmm. trying to like take something over or make something your own. I mean, like my family is so sweet and open and welcoming to that. I'm the bitch. I'm the one who's like, we're not fucking doing that. All right, <laughs> sorry. I'm glad you're very self aware. I'm just like, I don't know what you thought this fucking was, but yeah. we're not. All right. Yeah, yeah. I, I I agree. I'm just like. There's a tradition, Christmas and Thanksgiving are very different holidays. Like in my family specifically, before uh, pre-COVID, Thanksgiving was our big holiday. Everybody comes together. They go to one person's house, depending on what state you're in, blah, blah, blah. And we have the staple, you know, Mm -hmm. foods. You don't mess up this don't try to add anything don't take anything away just let it go yeah and now post covid i don't think we've gotten together it's it, pretty much everybody get together in silos and whatnot which i actually kind of prefer that a little bit better because because my boundaries are firm and i just don't want to be around certain people mm-hmm. um and i don't have to be so which is why i choose not to be anyway but yeah it's like don't don't come into a family trying to impose your own like traditions oh i like to do no 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 I we'll like raisins in my exactly no. It's like, well, put your raisins on the side of your raggedy ass plate, uh-huh. but don't put that You're shit in your guest it. here, You're, baby. You're not tenored. You have no stories that can relate to our family. No, tread lightly, pipe down. Anyway, um, I'll tell you what. are you putting in the rehab quarter this week? Um, just unaware therapists who are just annoying me sometimes there's therapists out therapists are just people okay (laughs) Okay. and there's great people and there's not great people and Mm -hmm. there's good therapists and there's not as great therapists there's therapists that i get along with and i would literally die for and there's therapists i want to throw off a fucking building into oncoming traffic amen (sighs) that was woosa okay and it's just the darndest thing that most of those are men you know Mm, i would have to agree uh, uh, no, nah, it's 50 50 for me, especially it's where it's either work. men or masculine presenting women for me. Mm. Um, the little girly girls I can handle, punt them over in the corner, they'll be fine. Yeah, but man, it's just, I just, men in this profession, probably any profession, but I'm like, you don't know mm. everything because you have a fucking penis. Well, you know, I think it's just the fact that men in, in medicine, um, to me, traditionally, and I know it's gonna sound real fucked up as a physical therapist, however, <laughs> um, traditionally for me personally not professionally don't look at monica the physical therapist look at monica the person i traditionally don't trust uh male healthcare professionals and the reason why i don't i won't say that i necessarily trust them i would prefer a female over a male uh, clinical professional because women pay more attention to detail and men mm-hmm. do not i need and empathy so, i need self-awareness i don't I even need empathy i just manner. need you to be competent and i'm not that saying that too. men are, are, are incompetent because they're not but when it comes to certain things of listening skills active listening i don't need you to treat me like i'm your wife and you're ignoring me i need you Oof. to actually li- actively listen to what i am saying to you as a patient and act accordingly so i had a patient this week um 
who was having some issues and you could tell like, first of all the man has dementia anybody who has dementia why in the fuck are you explaining anything to them like <laughs> I'm and not saying that people really sit there you they listen, do. and I understand <laughs> you're supposed to but yeah, god damn I get it like let's we're not just gonna <laughs> bum rush this patient and fucking throw him to the other we gotta explain but you've now told this person hit precaution 77 times they're not gonna fucking get it alright you've asked them their prior level of function 8 times they don't know they, well even to the doctor it's, for me it's the, more than doc, the doctors the doctors will come in and try to explain this complex diagnosis to this patient like, no. and I'm like did you read their chart <laughs> they don't know the they're first coming thing going. on their chart says 85 year old patient with dementia that should let you know who's this person's medical power attorney <laughs> Who's this person's I'm advocate? looking for the you know, other adult in the room. Where, where's, the fa- where's the daughter, the son, the son-in-law? Somebody who is responsible for this particular patient. Like, I had to literally tell a doctor. I was like, I was in the middle of my evaluation, and this was a stroke patient. And so you know how I am about stroke patients. I am mm-hmm. very in tune with stroke patients because I love neuro, but also, too, you have to really pay attention to what you're doing when you have a stroke patient because you can catch things very quickly. Anyway, so I'm with the stroke patient and I'm trying to do an assessment because <clears throat> the patient is also, also having visual issues. So, of course, the doctor comes in, turns on the light. Turn the fucking light off. I had the light <laughs> off for a fucking reason. So then I said, I'm in the middle of, my, uh, middle of my PT evaluation. You need to give me 15 minutes and I'll be done. And they were like, oh, we like to watch him walk. You can watch him walk outside the door. And so then she's like, oh, well, if you're getting him up to the edge of the bed, I would love to listen to their heart and lung. Listen. And so I said, I, I, do, I do this thing where I say, absolutely not. Because you need to give this patient your undivided attention, just like I'm trying to give them my undivided attention and do my inv- actual evaluation. You can come back in 20 minutes. Now I'm going to add five minutes onto it. Okay? <laughs> I don't like to be interrupted. Anywho, and so for me, it's just like, why don't you understand that concept? Like, I get mm-hmm. it. You have people that you have to see, but so do I. You're not more important than me, and you're not going to skip me in line. That's not how this is going to work. Because I'm not going to Meanwhile, I'm like, okay, that's fine. Yeah, I, I still carry that on too. And my my coworkers, like the OTs who do co treat with me or co eval, they're just like, oh my God, I love co evaluating with you because you always put the doctors in line. It's about common decency and respect. Just respect me and I won't have to do that. Uh-huh. Like, just just do that. Anyway, um, what else are you doing in the rehab corner? That was it. Oh, okay. I got to tell y'all, I'm just going to give you this, this trigger warning. Okay. If a T dub. I, I need to give y'all a trigger warning about what I'm throwing in the rehab corner. Um, it is pertaining to medicine, unfortunately. Okay. Um, and it's not going to drive you away from like, it's no conspiracy theories. This is just a really potentially disgusting story. So if you want to a go P-D-S. ahead and S- just skip to the next five minutes and then you'll be fine. I'm going to try to tell this really quick. I had a patient this week. What were you going to say? Nothing. Okay. So skip five minutes real quick. Uh, so I had this patient this week that drunk his own urine. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. What color was it? It was... <laughs> Dark yellow, Bruh. medium yellow, light yellow. It was like light yellow. And it was like, not lemonade. Like I just chugged a bottle of water and then peed. Kind of yes. light yellow. Okay. Yes. I mean, not great, but not horrible. So, it wasn't like kidney failure brown. Okay, you're trying to be very specific and I'm trying not to be specific. Oh. So I'm trying to save the people who are actually still wa- listening to this. Because I'm watching. interested in. I'm quite sure you are. But so I had this patient this week who, um, a younger guy, but um, when you have patients who are potentially hoarders, or alleged hoarders, right? Special kind it's of person. Ve- it's, it, it takes a lot of patience, right? And so um, I walk into the patient's room, literal shit all over the floor, right? Like papers, just towel, everything that you can think of was on this floor. Which is crazy because okay? it's a hospital room. Right. And apparently EVS had been, uh, and environmental services had been cleaning his room multiple times a day. And he was, I don't even know how he was getting stuff. I really don't. So I walk in, the smell already was very rancid. And they had given this man a bath multiple times. Number two, when I walked in, he had like, you know how most hospitals have like a drawer or like a little um, bedside table bedside or whatever table, uh-huh. that people have. So in this drawer, he has cans of tuna. I don't know where he got the cans of tuna from. One of the cans was open. And so Ugh. the tuna was like dried out. Oof. Right. So then there was another little cup, like a mug, where he had dried up like eggs and sausage and cheese. Like, and sir, so, just throw it away. Right? And so he's literally scooping his hand in there with his black nails Ugh. and he's eating the food. Right. God damn it. So myself and the nurse, we kind of try to tag team him because uh, she has to unwrap his foot and uh, put like a lidocaine patch on Of course on his foot's fucking disgusting. Well, I didn't look at that part, but because <laughs> he had weight bearing precautions. If you have to unwrap <laughs> something in a hospital, 10 times out of 10 is fucking gross. Well, he had a he had a procedure on his foot, so they just wrapped it afterwards. So anyway, longer story long, um, 
as we're doing that, this man is literally hitting his wound up against the bed. Uh, and I'm uh. just like, th- this is why we are in the hospital right now. Yeah. And um, after she does that, he says, she gives him some pain, a pain pill. And so he has multiple different like cups on the, the tray table. And I'm like, uh, I was like, oh, let me just get this one. So I see one that's like clear as day. It looks like the, you know, your clear water over there. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, clearly this is fresh. And the nurse was like, yes, I just gave that to him. I was like, cool. So I'm trying to hand him that water. And then there's other waters on the table. And he's like, no, no, no. Let me have that one. Well, this one is like cloudy and yellow. And I'm like, I, I know we don't give patients lemons. And I know you ain't got no lemon juice in here. Mm-hmm. So whatever. Uh, oh, God. And so they, well, stop making the noises. Sorry. So then I said, well, no, I'm not going to give you that. I'm going to give you the regular water that the nurse just said. She just kept brought in here, and I'm giving you that. Okay. So he goes and take, and drinks the water, takes his pill and everything. So once I turn around to move something out of the way, he reaches over the table to grab the actual cup that he wanted, and he starts to chug it. <sighs> So then I'm thinking nothing of it, right? <clears throat> I just know it's cloudy and it looks yellow, whatever. Could be anything. It could be anything, right? And so then I treat him or I evaluate him. He stands. Y'all, the amount of poop that was in this bed mm, 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 was mm. insane. And then there was a piece of bacon in the bed. Once he still <laughs> Bacon up. in the bed. And so I was like, sir, your bed's dirty. Let me go ahead and change it. No, 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 I'm good. And Sorry. that's always what it is for me. Is like I'm offering. I know how it is in hospital. I bet you no one's wanted yeah. to come in here and no one's wanted to help. And here I am trying to be nice, doing shit I don't want to do. And you're like, nope, nope. And, and he he refused to let me change the bed. So I was like, you know what, sir? It, it, <laughs> I'm not gonna argue with you. You I, win this you, round, buddy. You win this. The, the nurse sees it. She's in the room. I'm I'm not gonna fight you over it. So then he finally sits down. And then when he sits down, he knocks over a cup that he had, which was like a QT cup, like the the mm-hmm. gas station QT. So when the cup falls, because it's completely empty, it looked like it was already wet inside. So it falls and it rolls. And as it rolls, obviously the lip of the cup is, you know, hitting every surface of this dirty hospital floor. I pick up the cup. I throw it in the trash. He says, no, I need this cup back. And I said, sir, the cup fell on the floor. It's dirty. Once it's in the it trash. Hits the floor in the hospital, it's DOA. And I've already put it in the trash. So he says to me, no, I need this cup specifically. I said, sir, I can get you another big liner just as big as this cup. No, give me the fucking cup. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to argue with you again because, again, I'm just trying to do my job. Man knows what I he wants. I take the dirty cup out of the out of the trash and I give it back to him. You know what this man does? Hmm. He legit starts, like, you know how you hold the cup in your lip? He literally puts his lips on the cup, biting on the cup. Bum lips. And I just, I, I walked out and I was like, took a shower. Well, not at that hospital, but <laughs> <laughs> I, the nurse and I had to have like a 10 minute debriefing. Cause then she informed me that the substance that he drunk in the cup was his urine because he's peeing in the same cups that are the liners of the picture. Cause you know, all the hospital pictures are the same. He doesn't want to use the urinal. Exactly. He's using the urinal too, but he's also using the liners of the cups. And no matter how many times you throw it away, he will legit drink all the water and then still piss in it. Oh, I just got a chill. <laughs> Y'all pray for your healthcare workers. You know, oh, what? these people are nasty. I just, and I, it's like, what, what mental health what diagnosis do do? is that? Like, what, do, what do you do? I know because also we're not sitting here trying to be like, Oh, that's gross. And it's not like he picked his nose and fucking ate it. Like yeah. that is, we can all agree. Gross. <laughs> yeah. Like that, like not even gross, like infectious potentially and yeah. unsanitary. Especially when you, you have, know? Oh my God. So I, I just, I told the nurse, I was like, he needs a psych consult. And I, also, and there people, needs to be an APS case on that. People drink urine when they're like stranded in the fucking wilderness and have nothing to drink, which is why I'm like, we have running water, sir. This is the first we're in a middle of a city, which makes me believe he's a hoarder. Cause I'm like, if you felt comfortable to do that in the hospital, I know that's not the first that's time you've the done thing that too. Yeah. In front of other people, you were exactly. just like with your whole chest doing that. I just, I just felt, but I was like, we may, need to open up an APS case yeah like, I mean, thanks I don't you're know. correct yeah so the, the nurse did but I was just like I, every I was trying ne- in my 11 years of being a PT I have never had an experience <laughs> like, I literally almost up I never have had an if experience you like almost up I'm glad I it takes a lot for me to have I to, know I would have been dead I couldn't have even gone in there yeah oh the tuna would have gotten me out of been out with the tuna yeah and, and you know you you're wearing a mask but the mask is it you know, you can smell through all that shit. Uh, and I'm and really bad with dirty fingernails. Patients with dirty fingernails. 
it's just the fact that when they just start to touch their wounds, I'm like, can you please not? Anyway, mm-hmm. so that was my traumatizing story. That's for what the you're week. putting in the rehab. That's what I'm putting in the rehab corner. Patients who Tuna drink their urine. Piss. Yeah, that's pretty gross. Tuna and piss. Yeah, that's was, what that room smelled like and shit. And bacon. And bacon. <laughs> With a hint of bacon. A hint of fried animal fat. A hint of bacon. <laughs> Yum. Mm. Oh, man, I love this job. Yeah. But all that to say, we see some very interesting things and the restraint that we have to maintain as professionals. See how hard it is to be professional? It really is because your your natural instincts kick in and it's like, what do you do in that situation? Nobody prepares you for that. PT school does not prepare you for that. I've no. never said I was like I'd rather have a patient with scabies and bed bugs than to deal with that. That was that was a lot. Oh, anyway. Oof. All right. Uh, next thing we got to talk about. It, it's gonna take up a little bit, probably the bulk of our show. Anyway, we got to talk about it, y'all because we haven't talked about it. And I know uh, there's been a lot of supporters that have been asking us. It's only been like three, but that's uh, a lot. <laughs> like and three of us, y'all. It matters. Yeah, three of y'all who really are consistent at watching this. Y'all really want to hear our opinions about the election. Um, so as you know, the election happened on November the 5th and, um, unfortunately for me, I don't know about everybody else. I know we have fans and supporters who are both on all both sides and that's perfectly fine. Um, but I, the person who I voted for, which was Kamala Harris, um, she unfortunately lost, uh, the presidency to, uh, 45 and there has been a whole whirlwind of events <laughs> that since have happened then. in the last two weeks that have happened since then. Can I ask you, how was of your course. day at work? that next day it was very eerie eerie eerily yes. silent yes it was very silent and w- the hospital that i work at you know the the people love to talk about uh politics i just think in hospitals in general everybody loves to talk, loves to talk about politics but well, it's because hospitals um, are a small talk place exactly it's all you have is small talk and politics is like number one it's like not weather a, politics yeah not a single religion too mm-hmm. not a single person said anything to me about the election i didn't hear any chatter any whispers about the election i was like wow this is different okay not that the election wasn't at the front of my mind, but also yeah. like when I got to work, I'm like, it's time to fucking work. Like I have yeah, shit to do. Yeah, I have do. patience to see. And I kept, people kept coming up. I swear to, I'm not even fucking kidding you. I, seven times, cause I counted. Mm-hmm. People were like, how are you doing today? Are you okay? <laughs> and I told one of the other, I was like, do I look like shit today? Dude, people keep asking me if I'm all right. Is it cause you're black? I, I fucking get, and like. And they were just like, how are you doing today? And yeah. I was like, I'm okay. I thought something had happened. Like, some, you know, sometimes there's a bunch of codes in the ICU in the morning. Yeah. It's just a crazy fucking day. Mm-hmm. Or like a, pa- a patient you've been seeing for a long time passes away. I'm like, did someone die? Yeah. And so finally I said, well, to this nurse that, you know, they'll tell you. Okay. Oh. So finally I asked this woman or this, she was like, how are you doing today? Are you, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, how are you? Are you okay? And she was like. Well, you know, it was just really hard to get here this morning. And I was like, oh, it's the fucking election. That's why everyone's fucking yeah, asking me. Yeah. She's like, you know, of course I wanted a different outcome for the election, but we're just going to have to do what we can do. And I'm just hoping everyone can kind of like rally together. And, and I, all I could think in my head was like, you are a 50 year old white woman. You'll be okay. <laughs> like this is, I hate having this fucking, and I know that you're trying to be sweet and I, but can I see your fucking patient or not? Yes. You're going to be all right. Let's not do this. Whole and I was pow-wow. just like, uh, what this the kumbaya fuck? kumbaya moment. Yeah. Anyway. So yeah, but eerie is, it was yeah, like, it was um, very silent. like I hate to compare it to like the days after a very large terrorist attack we once had in this country. Yeah. But like the very overall solemn feeling of a bunch of people. And you're like, that's weird. Very much so. Yeah. Because you know what too, I went to bed because I don't stay up for the election stuff. I I don't. Um, The last time I did that was at uh, FAMU when Barack Obama won for the first time. And somebody blasted Jeezy. My president is black. And we were all in the streets at FAMU. And we were going crazy. It was amazing. It was amazing time. Uh, You know, when we had uh, net checks and all that kind of stuff. Anywho, but for me, at, at my particular place of work, at my hospital, that there was nobody talked about it. Nobody. When I tell you, not a single Fox News, CBS, NBC, ABC, nothing was on. This is the one day everybody <laughs> decided to watch Family Fucking View. <laughs> nobody wanted to watch CNN, which I was very shocked and surprised yeah. about. And um, yeah, it was it was very very somber, and people were just like trying to go about their day. And I really thought that the election wasn't going to be called honestly until Saturday. I saw. Thought I was giving it Friday. Yeah, I was like, you're not gonna know anything by Wednesday. Like, there's no yeah. point in even trying to figure out, like, oh, who's won this and who, I you was know. Surprised. And um, there was a there were a lot of opinions, you know, obviously on social media about it. Um, I think for 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 me, first of all, I think when I when I heard that Kamala conceded, 
which does not mean that she necessarily gave up the election. That just means she respects the, the results of the actual election, which 45 did not. Anyway, um, I think for, for some of us that were very sad about the re- results of the election, I think we need to give ourselves some grace. Right. And give ourselves some grace that we like don't feel bad because you hoped that this country would be different, that you hoped that the vile things that were said and done was at least enough to prove that this person was, that we were a better country than what we are. But at the very core of who the United States of America is, is racist and classist. That's just who, that's who this country, that's what this country is at founded the very core. It's, it was say. founded on classism and racism. And so this idea that, um, again, because I hoped that we were different. And I've said multiple times on this podcast, the only people who will change votes and who run elections are white women in this country. And to see them overwhelmingly give this man not only just the White House, <laughs> you gave him the Senate, you gave him the House, you gave him the Supreme Court. I mean, the Supreme Court is already there, but you get, you gave him everything that he wanted at this point. Yeah. And so that, you know, your rights as and I'm only talking about the people who voted in this direction, the people who voted for Trump, you voted against your rights as a woman. You voted against your friends and family who are a part of the LBGTQ, LGBTQ plus community. You voted against, you know, black people, black and brown people. You voted against migrants in this country. You, you voted, voted against for your a candidate interests. endorsed by the KKK. KK, exactly. And, um, and, and here's the thing too. It's okay that you vote different from someone else. Nobody's trying to crucify anybody for voting different. Right. Mm-hmm. But just like I said on the last podcast, you can vote for Trump free and clear. You can't be in my life and vote for him. Now, whether that means you keep your vote a secret of who you voted for, <laughs> because there's no way for me to find out. Right. But if you're openly and, you know, openly supporting this person, yeah. um, you can't be in my life. Now, I don't mind having a conversation with you. I have no problem being cordial with you. That just means in my inner circle, you can't be around me because mm-hmm. we again, if what you're voting for is at the detriment of me, how in the hell can we come across an aisle and do this? Right. We can't, right? That's to me. That's personally for me. Everybody is different. Um, but again, we come from all walks of life. We work with people um, from all walks of life who all different beliefs, religions, all that kind of stuff, right? And it's perfectly okay to have those conversations and come, to, and come together for that particular point. But I find it very interesting that you know, um, white women in this country, and I'm only talking about the people who participated in this. I ain't talking about all white women because I don't classify all white women in the same category to a degree. But the first thing that they said, what some white people, white women on social media were saying, well, we want the 92% of black women to know that we are allies. So we're going to go and do some arts and crafts and put on some blue bracelets. You, you really thought that that was appropriate? Like they overturned Roe v. Wade, and these white women went in the streets with bras, paint, like arts and crafts, and painting bras and uteruses on shirts. Ay, ay, ay. You you spent more time and energy and money investing in the arts and crafts than actually voting, <laughs> you know, toward your interest at that point, you know. Mm-hmm. And then people love to like I was having this one conversation with my one coworker. And he's a known Trump supporter. He's not like a, um, well, he not in my face. He's not like a mad guy. In my face. Like he's not like Trump, 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 Trump. Because Trump. there are that. Trump supporters, and then there's Trump, MAGA. Trump, MAGA Trumpers. Yeah, exactly. So he, I a, do think that is a distinction, right? And so he, you know, and I, I, we have had conversations where he's told me his one thing that he cannot compromise on is the abortion issue, and he's a young guy. He's Which, younger than me. Fair. That and is that's fair. And that's fair. An issue for a lot of people. Exactly. And so I said, I said to him, I said, now you are a healthcare professional with a medical license, right? And I said, you know that the term abortion is an umbrella mm-hmm. term. And when you just think about, okay, a, the word abortion and not reproductive care, I said, you as a healthcare professional, you as a, he's a nurse, you as a nurse, you are aware that an ectopic pregnancy is pretty much incompatible to life for that fetus or for that embryo, right? And he's like, yeah, 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 I know that. I said, so if a if a patient was having an ectopic pregnancy, you're voting against the life of that woman to be able to be saved because you know that tube is going to burst. 
and she's gonna hemorrhage and potentially die. So her and the baby gonna die, and you're okay with that. Mm -hmm. That's literally what that means. Now I get it on the the term of people going in and just being, you know, uh, 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 having sex and getting pregnant and having abortions, whatever. But that's still their right. Mm -hmm. You don't. You also don't have a uterus. And so I told him, I said, well, what if you have a daughter? What if your sister went through that? And the state told her, hey, you you, you wanted your baby. You wanted this pregnancy. Yeah. But again, it's ectopic. Your tube is now burst and you're not dying enough for us to actually kick in and do anything. And he was just like, no, I get it. But to me, the abortion, did, like it was like he refused to kind of see that point, which is fine. When you hit a brick mm -hmm. wall, you move on. Me and him, we still see patients. We still are cordial. We still have fun. We laugh. We joke. We have no issue. Which is, I don't know. It's just so interesting, too, because I feel like a lot of people were getting stuck on the abortion rights of it all. Mm -hmm. And that's why, like, later in the campaign, I felt like Trump stopped talking so much. About, like, he's trying to get mm -hmm. away from, like, these, cra like, not crazy, but these, like, super right wing. As you do, right? Mm -hmm. You're just trying to get these votes. And I was telling someone, to like, I mean, what you were saying, bottom line, is... What was I saying? No, I'm here. I'm here. Five, six, <laughs> seven, eight. It's a touchy subject. It's a touchy subject. Bottom line was you had one person spewing crazy bullshit mm -hmm. and another one who had spent her life in politics trying to become the president of the United States, right? Mm -hmm. But I also felt like for people who aren't super involved in politics mm -hmm. and don't consume a lot of that media or literature that the democratic party was running on well surely you won't vote for this guy he's crazy and a racist hmm. yeah i think what you and that was the campaign which isn't bad I, it, yeah. it worked on a lot of people but there were also a lot of people who you vote based on how you're feeling right now mm -hmm. a lot of people and a lot of people mm -hmm. are fucking miserable right now inflation's yeah. horrible countries divided rights are getting to you know the pro but you know what the pro and those are, those are facts the problem is People who were saying the economy is bad, inflation is insane. The reason why they're saying these things is because they refuse to do the research on why it is the way that it Correct. is. Everybody wants to talk about the what. Mm -hmm. This is what we're experiencing today. Uh, eggs are $20. Pickles are $50. Nobody is trying to find out. Nobody is it's not, not to try to find out. Nobody is talking about the why mm -hmm. there was a whole pandemic a global let's look up the word global it does not mean just the united states everybody's economy was fucked up china's economy was fucked up ukraine's economy was fucked up russia africa antarctica god damn it everybody at this point i don't think antarctica has a government but i'm just well, saying yeah, and everybody and it's not just us like it's a not just the united states all over the world the people who are running countries during the pandemic are getting thrown out, right? They're trying, this is happening everywhere. But it's like, it's the same way in court where the prosecution just has to be like, well, surely they did it without a burden of a doubt, right? Like this, mm -hmm. they had to have done it. And the defense has to be like, well, maybe not. Right. Well, it's then, the same way. Whoever doesn't have the presidency right now, whatever, like Republican, Democrat just has to be like, well, it could be better with this. Exactly. The other party has to be like, no, we swear exactly. it will get better. Even though we're doing this now, it doesn't feel great. This is how we can make it well, better. Well, e even with inflation and even with taxes, people are talking about, well, you know, Trump's going to cut taxes for, for, for us. Who? For Baby, you, you're in poverty. <laughs> you are, you are at the poverty line. Even you making seventy five thousand dollars a year, a hundred thousand dollars a year, which your take home ain't nothing but eighty thousand. You are at the poverty line at I this am, point. I am poor. If you make under four hundred thousand dollars a year, you are in poverty in the United States of America. Mm -hmm. Isn't so, that the saddest shit you've ever fucking heard? The middle class is in poverty. It's all the people who make less than twenty thousand dollars a year. Nobody cares about them. Mm -hmm. Like literally, when I say that, I'm not saying I don't personally care. I, the government don't care about She's them, like, which is why I don't. But also, right, the government does not equate them into talking about what they can do to as help people, the economy. Because they're not, not that they're not functional in society, but there's no bump they, there. They're, they're not. They in poverty. They're not producing or <laughs> contributing 
at an amount that would fucking if anything they're sucking the resources yeah. and not and uh, let me let me change my verbiage they are not sucking the use resources they are utilizing the resources the people who are actually sucking the resources are the one percent <laughs> okay because when you cut taxes for people who make above four hundred thousand dollars a year Guess who the burden falls on? You people who make less than $400,000 a year. This idea that Trump is going to cut taxes and then the money's just going to come out of thin air out of his ass, baby, it's going to be you. <laughs> just like the tariffs. You're talking about oh, China's going to pay the tariffs. tariffs. That's a hot, hot buzzword right now. You really think that China is going to say, you know what? We want you to have our products so much so that we're going to pay extra to give it to you. <laughs> Bitch, what? Google is free, y'all. Google is free. Uh, and the sad part is people were talking. I heard some people who, um, very prominent people who are in politics, who are in that world. I, I'll say, for for example, Simone Sanders, who is somebody that I really respect mm -hmm. for her political views. Number one, her experience, because she's actually in it. She was the campaign manager and also the, um, I don't know if she's a chief of staff for Kamala, but she worked on Kamala's uh, uh uh, worked for the vice president. Anyway, I love Simone, a bald black woman. Listen, she can wear a bald head like nobody There's else. Something, She's beautiful. I think for a couple of reasons, a most women who are bald and black are just like stunning. Um, is my first reason. My yeah. second reason is like you have to be a very confident person, absolutely, to rock a bald head, absolutely. And I do appreciate that. Yeah. Anyway, continue. But yeah, Simone Sanders is a person that I love to listen to, um, because of her political opinion and again her her proximity to the actual facts. But she brought up something the next the next day after the election, and she was talking about Kamala's strategy. And I think there are so many think pieces about the Democrat strategy, and they had Megan Thee Stallion up there, and they had this and that. Baby, I don't give a fuck about no strategy, y'all. <laughs> this woman, let me tell you something. I don't care if it was Kamala. I don't care if it was Joe Biden. It could have been Gavin Newsom. It could have been Beto O'Rourke, okay? At the end of the day, the very core of the United States is built on racism and classism. So it does not matter that this man had four years to campaign versus Kamala had 107 days. She ran the absolute best campaign that she could have possibly ran. And the fact that she she raised a billion dollars in less than 90 days for her campaign, nobody else would have been able to do that, right? Mm -hmm. Or maybe they would have. Who the hell cares? I don't give a damn if Glorilla came out there, Megan Thee Stallion came out there butt-ass naked. The results <laughs> would not have been different. And we're focusing so much on the the Democrats got to do better. Baby, if these people's minds are made up, mm -hmm. they will have the facts in their face and still. Tr Trump said, grab the women by the pussies. OK, but that's what the man said. They played it on every news station. And you know what women said, specifically white women? That's just locker room talk. Locker room talk. So God forbid your daughter was raped and her rapist said the same thing. You'd be, oh, he's the scum of the earth. But somehow Trump is not. Locker room Trump. Like, to me at this point, it's not about Trump. It's not about Elon. It's about the very core of Americans here in this country who, were, who are, number one, uneducated. Mm -hmm. Uneducated as fuck. On and education. Purpose. And oh. You are willful ignorance and uneducated opinions. And it ain't like y'all living in, you know, Timbuktu without internet and these and Google. You have information in the palm. Girl, of your you have a vast amount of info. Endless. Endless. Eons. Cornucopia. Okay. You're choosing, you're choosing ignorance. And which is why. Trump loves people like that. He loves people that are not going to question him. And the fact that, again, people kept talking about this abortion shit. I don't give a fuck about abortion at this point. I really don't. Because you, if you ain't got no uterus, you shouldn't have no say. We already know that. Leave, people, leave, leave women bodies alone. My biggest point is Project 2025. This man just made... He's, Trump is now making his cabinet selections. This man made a man with a worm in his brain. <laughs> The Secretary of Hell. Sounds like a Simpsons episode. You know what's interesting to me is that so far, and this this may, you know, age badly because he may end up nominating a black person. 
<laughs> Trump right now at this point has not nominated a single or given a job to a single black person in his cabinet. Not Candace Owens, not Ben Carson. Ben Carson is a whole neurosurgeon. Movies and, about him. And you gonna make the man with the worm in his brain the secretary of health who willingly ate a worm? <laughs> Earth is ghetto. I want to leave. I cannot take this country. I cannot. Like you make it. You made up a a, a profession. Elon Musk is gonna be and it's the head of government up. efficiency. It sounds like when your daddy needs you to work at the company but doesn't want you to actually have any real power. Cause he made a car. Like, Cause man, he made a car. What he's doing over there at Tesla? We really like that. We want you to apply it to the government. All his cars were recalled. Oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> but he going to be efficient. He going to get them out. They going to break down. <laughs> but he going to get them out. Everyone hates their Tesla. I just, you know, <laughs> I I have not laughed so much so than I have laughed in the last two weeks. Because you got to laugh to keep them crying. You really do. That's true. There's nothing funny about this, but it is, bitch. <laughs> okay? <laughs> it fucking is. Because I saw that um, people were doing, uh, on social media, of course, they were doing uh, uh, searches on like what was the most searched topic on Google. You know, you can readily mm-hmm. do that. I even did it myself too. The first two that popped up at that particular time was uh, in the, the first three days after the election, people were like asking Google, how can I change my vote? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Baby, you can't change it. I can't change. I can't change. I can't change. How, but I can't change. That's can't. the whole point of the vote. Once you vote, it's voted. It's You're done. You it's counted. What? I take mine back. <laughs> psych. Actually, psych. No, that's not. Well, and that these works. are the people who are voting. People who think that they can take their votes back. Oh no. Then the second question was second most asked question was what is a tariff? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> that's eighth grade, baby. I'm telling. But you know what? It Trump, I think, um, flawlessly executed his campaign. This man ran on the truth. He did not sugarcoat anything that he wanted to do. Well, and he just didn't do as much crazy shit as he did the first time that was really rallying the people up. What do you? I mean, he still did crazy shit, but he let other people say crazy shit this time, I feel like, more than he was the one. Well, because he's more demented now. Well, that's true, but I feel like. He can't open up a dump truck. <laughs> But talking about Sleepy Joe, <laughs> sir, he probably got a worm in his brain. I, but I just feel like they were telling him, they're like, if you can just shut up 25% more than you did last time, we can just, we can set it up. The thing is, this idea that, you know, there were undecided voters. I hate when people say stuff like that. And this is me as a not an not undecided a voter. Let me tell you something. You know how, okay. How is anyone undecided? You know how in like school, pretty stark. when you have a test and you know you have a test and you've been studying, right? And then you come to school and then you start trying to read over your notes before the test is actually handed out. Bitch, you doing that, you ain't going to learn shit else. What's already in your brain is what's already in your brain. You reading over your little study notes is not going to give you an extra advantage over anything. You're still not going to know it, okay? Mm -hmm. And I feel like this ideology that there were undecided voters at the ninth hour, everybody already knew who they were voting for. It's the people that you – I saw Don Lemon, and I followed him during the the political campaign and during the election. He was going out and asking people on the streets, like, hey, who did you vote for? People were proudly, Kamala Harris. I'm voting for Kamala Harris. It's the people that he's like, who are you voting for? Um, You know, why are you ashamed of who you're voting for? Stand on the vote. I don't understand why why people they think didn't that know you couldn't take it back. Well, and this is why you should this is why you should educate yourself. If you can create a TikTok, if you can create an Instagram reel, if you can goddamn sign up for these fucking platforms, but you can Google who is the right candidate. <laughs> Hell, ask Chat GPT. I'm quite sure to tell you. I that's interesting. I wonder what Chappy Cheap G Oh my God. Are you what, having a what's going on, girl? A sloke? Um I, I'm going to look at J- chat GPT. They probably gonna tell me some fuck shit. I already know. Yeah. Which candidate should I, and then it would probably, I wonder what questions it would ask you for context. <laughs> uh, what candidate should, I don't think you can, you only have to give it prompts though. It's not going to tell me. 
It's probably going to ask you questions about what you think. It's probably going to tell you, bitch, you already elected someone. Yeah, it's probably going to tell me that. Because you got to get it prompts. You can't, um... Oh, come on. This thing wants to be stupid. It's my computer. It's not me. Um... Okay, well that was fun. Yeah, I know well, you're, you're the be, one who does this anyway. There used to be websites, and it would be like, what? It would say like, "Do you believe in this? Do you believe in that?" Then this is the candidate for you. Yeah, you're the, you know, you're the computer. I'm the computer. I don't know why you asked me to do that shit. America's most popular voting guide for elections. Isidewith.com. There's a quiz. Oh, for the 2028 presidential quiz. Who the what? fuck's running in 2028? Will we even be able to? We don't know what this man gonna do. Top issues. Abortion, gay marriage, gun control, LGBT adoption rights, gender transition, equal pay, transgender athletes, inflation. That's a lot of um, sex and gender stuff. Here's the thing. The transgender stuff is not, to me, is not as much as they are trying to make it out to be. Again, we already know that the T's are this big of the population, and they try to make it like the trans community is this huge, millions of trans. It's not. It's way more L's and G's up in there. <laughs> and Q's. <laughs> that, that also is very interesting. Yeah, I just I just feel like people were focusing so much on the 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 external fact. Well, why didn't she win? Well, she had Megan Thee Stallion on the stage twerking and talking about body yada yada, and that's and this is the level of intellect you thought, baby. I again, she could have put a damn rabbit eating a, a carrot on stage saying vote for Kamala. The results would have been the same. When did COVID start? Twenty twenty. Okay. Well. Technically 2019. It just like trends all the issues. And it was like in 2021, because like gay marriage has been a huge issue and it hit this huge drop off. And I was like, what was happening that people, I was like, oh, COVID. Well, I just want people to know too that, you know, the fact that I think Project 2021, if I'm not mistaken, from the portions that I read, um, is saying that they're trying to kick a lot of things back to the states. And this is why we talk about on this podcast how important it is to vote in your local elections. We dumb insane. Because that. when things go back to your state, the state will control how you live. And with all those states that turn red, all I got to say is I'm getting my PT license in a blue state. Cause baby. Where is that? I'm not saying. <laughs> I don't want people to know my plan. Oh, they already know too much. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I find it interesting that um even this one particular cruise line, they were talking about how they have a four year cruise. They're offering this about $40,000 a year. And they are saying, Oh, it's not political, but if people who feel threatened, allegedly, you know, want the blacks cruise, and the gays, pretty, well, that the, sounds like a fun fucking cruise ship. But you know what too? I don't honestly believe, I, I, I really do believe that black people will be fine. Cause we've been, we've been ignored. We've been invisible. Mm -hmm. We've been discriminated against. We've been, you know, there's been laws made against us for us to be even able to have human rights. Okay. They don't even consider us still human at this point. The only people that are going to suffer under the tutelage of Trump are white women for the first time in their lives. They are going to know what it feels like to be be invisible they're gonna know what it feels like to not be centered and please don't come to black people for help because i'm not helping you i'm just gonna tell you right now i can't give you no strategy on how to be oppressed you have to figure it out yourself <laughs> watch handmaid's tale that's all i can tell you um all i can Maybe. say is this website i side with.com is actually really interesting and you should take the quiz for your next election we don't even know who the candidate is gonna be I guess, yeah, that's true. But it's just a really, the way they frame questions is interesting. And there's a bunch of... Um, Give us an example. What's one? Okay, like, um, should the government raise the federal minimum wage? Yes. Okay, should welfare recipients be tested for drugs? Yes. Okay, but there's also caveats. Because okay. I'm saying, I would say yes, too. But then I started thinking about it. And I was like, well, that's really shitty. Because, like, I don't know. There's all kinds of situations. What if you're trying to get better, but you have, you're on drugs and you have drugs in your system? Or what if you were drugged and then... You can't you get twisted and you can't get on welfare. Yeah, I still think it should be tested. <laughs> so it says yes, but provide treatment for those testing positive. Absolutely. Yes, and immediately terminate benefits for anyone testing positive. No, no, no. I don't think you should immediately terminate. I think you should 
you provide treatment and also too there should be you know uh different outliers that are th- not outliers that's the wrong word different avenues that are um and resources to combat some of that yeah yeah yes test anyone receiving money from the government including employees and politicians well we already have to do i mean most people who are who are, who are government employees or federal employees you have to you have to take a drug test when you first go and you have mm-hmm. to agree to have be randomly drug tested but then there are people who are on medications like you yeah. that your drug test will come back positive. So that doesn't mean that they should me- immediately terminate you. Right. Regardless, we should end all social welfare programs. I mean, the poor you will have <laughs> what you always, but you got to look at who's who's yeah. who's utilizing the, those resources. So just and it's not who you think. There's economic questions, immigration questions. There's science issues and social issues, domestic policy issues. So the immigration thing to me too, like is um a really interesting take I it's think- just so different to me depending on where you live because south texas is so affected like the people in south texas are so affected by immigration the people the citizens here on the border mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but the people in fucking kansas aren't like they're not they're not so the I'm, people in florida are affected by it too yeah so i'm just like it's so but you different. know what I, but you know what i think it is it, it like here's the thing does does the immigration process in the United States of any country need to be regulated? Absolutely. There needs to be avenues and resources and ways to help people to be able to seek asylum or to be able to come to this country and be able to be productive citizens of society. Right. right. I think we all agree on that very, on that very basic uh, principle. However, this ideology of we don't want these legals here because they're taking our jobs. I have said multiple times, I have never seen a person come from another country and say, hey, Monica, you, physical therapist, I want to take your job. Like, I think mm. we're going to see when avocados are $20 a pop, I don't want to hear y'all say fucking shit. Okay? <laughs> because y- y- nobody wants to be out in these fields picking fruits and vegetables for $2 a fucking day. And these are the jobs that people who come to this country undocumented are doing. Also, a lot of the issues people have with immigration are direct results of the fact that there's no infrastructure for them. And right. the policy's trash and where the government doesn't have the resources or the staffing. Okay, but even too, e- even with that, people saying stuff like, well, I don't believe that... Uh, you know, migrants should be getting free health care. Okay, let's put it in perspective from a scientific standpoint. If a person comes from a different country, right, and let's say they don't have access to the same types of health care that we have here in the, in, in the United States of America, this person, let's just say, for example, they test positive for TB, right? They're working around fruits and vegetables, around your produce. They get cut their blood, go, you know, just whatever. I, it could be hepatitis. It could be what, what the fuck ever. Some kind of blood-borne pathogen, right? Mm-hmm. Why would you not want this person or these people? I'm not group, grouping people, but if people came to this country and had certain um, illnesses, why would you not want them to be helped so that it doesn't affect you and your economy? They've never heard the story of Thanksgiving, I think. <laughs> they don't know how diseases spread. I guess, child. Because I'm just like, I would rather my tax dollars go to the health care, funding health care for migrants and asylum seekers versus paying for bombs that are killing people over in Ukraine and in Gaza. I'm just like, I, I mean, I don't have the best life in the world, but I like, I'd like that I don't have to go and do the jobs I don't want to fucking ha- Thank I have. Thank you. I have one job I don't want to fucking do, all right? I don't want to have to do all the other ones. And I, I had to get a doctor do. to get that. <laughs> and I am in debt because of it, all right? So I'm like, how, whatever we can and do I'm to grateful. facilitate... <laughs> Exactly. Those people doing whatever, those jobs. Exactly. I don't fucking do it. I mean, you know, you got people out here who are going to, I mean, it it happened when, um, there in Florida, when Ron DeSantis, uh, signed into law, the immigration bill, and you had a lot of, um, migrant workers who were like, or undocumented workers who were like, Hey, we leave in Florida. And then you had the, the, the quote unquote America people, you know, born and raised citizens of, 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 of the United States that now had to go on, even with construction, had to start doing all this back breaking work. And we're just like, Oh, I, I don't want to pick another strawberry. Yeah. Well, this is what the result that you get. Yeah. And, and you're going to feel the effect of these, you know, um, I pray, I pray it's only alleged and that it doesn't happen. All of this supposed mass deportation that Trump wants to do. Again, when your avocados are $20 a pop, I don't want to hear y'all complaining. I know. We're going to have to start growing our own food. 
I mean, well, we should be doing that anyway, but I don't like bugs. I don't like outside. <laughs> Man. Yeah. I, I, you know. Vote blue. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Get the blue bracelets. <laughs> Okay, I for one am wearing a blue bracelet. I'm kidding. Don't come in my face with that fucking shit. I That's stand stupid. with black women. Well, I mean, again, black women and black men, we have been for centuries um, discarded, invisible. There is no one more disrespected. And, exactly, and especially black women. So we we have already been going through this. So nothing's going to change for us. Like I said, the only people that are going to feel the effects of this are. Um, Hispanics in this country as well as white women in this country because for white women for the first time in your lives you're going to know what it feels like to be invisible and just remember when you can't do certain things stand on your vote that's all I'm saying and I'm not I'm not saying that it was going to be a thousand percent better with Kamala who no we honestly do not know Mm -hmm. all I do know is that Kamala wasn't running on a 900 page manifesto Telling you exactly what telling she exactly to do. she what she wanted to do, which was detrimental to most people. Okay, like you're putting people in all these positions and stuff, and oh Lord Jesus, your I blood pressure get up. You know, but congratulations to the other people who did win. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I mean I don't fucking know, uh, but yeah, it, it's a very interesting uh, situation. Also, too, some companies are also preparing for uh, 45's return. Um, the, one of my old classmates, she had posted on her uh, Facebook page how this one particular company sent out a letter to their staff saying, hey, starting January 1st, 2025, we will no longer be able to match your 401k. Which is wild. It's insane. Would you work for a company if they didn't match your 401k? No. I'm not, I, bitch, I'm working for... I say that, but I'm not, I don't even have benefits right now, so... Well, you know, and you're not 26, damn. I'm, I'm about to have to go full-time again. Yeah, it's about that time. I know. It was fun. It was fun about last year. Yeah, you know, you know. Uh, what were you telling me about? Uh, uh, I'm telling you that we've been here for an hour. We have been. We got to get out of here. Uh, real quickly, what would happen to these two planes that were shot? There were two planes that were shot at. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you so much. God damn. Breaking news. Breaking news. Um, I have no information about it, but I saw it and I was like, what the fuck is going on? Because one of them was in Dallas, wasn't it? Yeah, one was in Dallas and one was coming from Haiti. Which I think it was I hear Haiti's Haiti. a pretty tough place. I don't know much about it. I just know what I hear on the news. Haiti's beautiful. I did hear that too. Mm-hmm. I just hear unless you're with Haitians, maybe know where you're going and what you're doing. Yeah, I wouldn't travel to Haiti without like a Haitian tour guide. Absolutely. Yeah. Even Jamaica, I wouldn't explore Jamaica without a. Jamaican oh yeah, tour guide. my my uncle mm-hmm. and my aunt got robbed in Jamaica. Well, I just think that I mean I feel like if you go to somebody else's country, you need to. You need to travel with a person who actually who's from lives, the country, from the country yeah. because they get to show you all the great sides of that country and to, you know, keep you away from, you know, some of the, the trials and tribulations of the country. Southwest Airlines plane shot. Family on board describes experience. Here's what we know. A Southwest Airlines plane was shot at Luffield on Friday night. The bullet hit the plane near the cockpit and entry door. Passengers had to deplane and board another plane. I wouldn't get back on a plane. I'd be like, it's fine. Who the fuck is shooting me? Is this like the DC know. sniper all over again? What the hell is this? No one on board was hurt. Thank you, Jesus. What the fuck? They were calm. They didn't let us know anything was crazy. It was shocking and scary. The runway was closed. An investigation is still underway. Wow. Who shot the plane? Who oh, Lord. I shot the sheriff. But I did not shoot the deputy. Anyway, that's all I know about that. What about the seven year old you were telling me? It's <gasps> It w- just before we got on here, there was this article that a seven-year-old was found hung in a school bathroom. These kids were horse playing. I don't know what kind of game they were playing, um, but he was a second grader. Isn't that insane? It's crazy. Here, find it. See shit like that. It, that's taught. That's wh- why. Wh- what were you doing that you ended up hanging somebody? That's what I'm and like. That takes a lot of work and a lot of strength to me. I don't know. I've never hung someone before. Uh, I mean, one of my patients almost got hung. What? I didn't tell you about that, how he almost fell out of the no. you lift. No. <laughs> no. It's not funny. <laughs> Wait, he hung It's not funny. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, lift. it was a patient. He was like 500 pounds. And um, it was at the hospital I worked at when I first moved here. And the sling somehow, I don't know, I, I think it was just his body habitus and the sling was not proportioned. And um, he ended up sliding out of the sling. But it wasn't nowhere near around his neck. But I'm oh. just saying, he was about, he was dangling in the air though. Okay, yeah. this 
says. Did the seven year old pass away? Please tell me he didn't. Uh, a Maryland second grader was rushed to the hospital after he was hung in the boys' bathroom by an older bully who told him, I'm going to show you how I did people back in the day, his parents claim. Now, see, that, this is what I'm talking about. That's taught. Left the seven year old with a neck contusion. Jesus Lord. Him. That's probably why I don't handle kids now because God knows I would kill somebody as a child. You do my child like that. Wow. And I'm pressing charges on, on the parents, too. I think the child's still alive. I hope those parents press charges on those parents, too. He has marks under his eyes, like blood vessels, bruises on his neck from being choked. Jesus He's Lord. traumatized. The school confirmed the incident, chalking it up as horseplay. Oh, bullshit. It's, and the parents said, it doesn't make sense to me. If you're horseplaying, how do you get caught on a hook? We need answers. I want answers. Are By you damn kidding neck. me? My son did tell me that when they were in the bathroom, he said the little boy told him, I'm going to show you how I did people back in the day. That's why I feel like it's bullying. It's not telling how many other kids this has happened to. What? The, that is taught. Pe That's kids taught. don't just like. Kids, back make, in the kids day, make shit up like they swing their dick around and pretend it's like a fucking sword or something. A set, But a seven-year-old back in the day? Back in the day. Bitch, you was just in your mama coochie two days ago. You don't know what the fuck back in the day is. You were taught that shit. Oh, my God. I, I, hope, I, hope that kids. I hope that seven-year-old, whoever that bully was who did that to him, I hope they prosecute his ass to the fullest instead of the law, and I hope his uh, raggedy-ass mom and daddy go to jail, too, for that fuck shit. Also, there's a picture. Oh, it's the Instagram picture. I thought the, the press had gotten this picture. It's a picture of him laying in the stretcher. I wouldn't be surprised. You know they pay health care workers to get uh, details. I, just, I don't allegedly. think that should be out there. His face isn't in it, but that's scary. Yeah, that's that's horrible. That's absolutely horrible. Uh, what else are you talking about? The monkeys that escaped in South Carolina. Okay, I don't know what the I don't know <laughs> if I've gone on this podcast yet and said this, but I fucking hate monkeys. They scare the shit out of me. I've all I refuse to watch Planet of the Apes because I think that shit is real. I don't like them. They seem too smart to me, and I, I don't like the whole thumb thing. Also, they stare into your soul. They just creep me out. Now you can talk about the monkeys. Oh, they just some some by some monkeys escaped from South Carolina. Some uh, they uh, escaped from a research lab in South Carolina. From a research lab, and first I of think all, they're why, still on the loose. Why is that legal for you to practice on monkeys? What happened know. to rats? What happened to guinea pigs? I don't know. You know, they were breeding primates for medical research, and the monkeys are still at large. You couldn't find eight monkeys. You're telling me in South Carolina, you couldn't find eight monkeys running around. Let me tell you something. If I were in South Carolina and cutting my grass, first of all, I always cut my grass with my gun on me, but it, if I saw a monkey in my fucking yard, bitch, <laughs> I'm going to just pass out. Oh, wait. 43 escaped. Yeah. They, oh, my God. This that's so many two? fucking monkeys. Well, they've caught 35, but 43. Listen, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. God damn. Oh, How did they escape? God. Nobody. Is, no I know. Where's the escaped. footage? Where's the fucking Somebody footage? let them out. Somebody left the door open. Somebody got fired. That was a research intern, allegedly, and they let them things out because they no longer had funding. That, you can't convince me otherwise. People mm. in research do also, some crazy things. Also, don't they carry diseases? Yeah. Humans do, too. Wow. I would like to know how they got out, but they're pretty, they're pretty smart from what I've seen That's on crazy. the internet. That is crazy. Um, uh, is that a zebra on the street? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Lord Jesus. Um, Mike Tyson and Jake Paul uh, fought uh, over the weekend, and um, they actually both won, because both of them won $20 million to do that bullshit. Um and a 27 year old and a 58 year old man went at each other and there he were, still looks good he looks amazing and i think you know people are saying that jake paul won no you yeah, they both won because they won 20 million dollars and apparently allegedly there was something in the contract um and, I, and i'm saying allegedly because this is not evidence-based and this is not factual i heard it from a dude on tiktok anyway see i cite my sources anywho um this guy said that in the contract i guess it said that allegedly mike tyson had to get they both had to get past the three rounds to at least get the 20 million and that Mike Tyson couldn't do any uppercuts in order for him to get the 20 million as well too. So he was at a handicap pretty much. So, but I think honestly, if you really think about it, Jake Paul lost because you're a 27 year old man and you couldn't knock out a 58 year old man. And he stayed until the, like, I don't know. He looks better than a lot of other 58 year olds. Oh, absolutely. He's in the, he, listen, he in way better shape than I am. Did and you now see he's the, got money. Did you see him turn around? Like after the, <laughs> before the fight, he, uh, they asked my dad, they were like, how do you feel about the fight? He's like, it's going to be a vicious, brutal battle. And then he turns around, his ass cheeks are <laughs> <laughs> no. I was like, 
<laughs> and he told a reporter, he was like, the man was like, good luck to you out there. He was like, thank you. I love you. He kissed him on the oh. cheek. And then he walked off and his booty cheeks just out with a thong. I was like, Mike, come on now. God damn. He's funny. But it was like a, it was a jock strap, I guess, whatever. But anyway, <laughs> she was hilarious. He is like, like a character of himself. Yeah, he really is. But Especially after, I feel like, I don't know, and like the hangover and stuff, the way he's mm-hmm. portrayed. I'm just like, is he actually a real person? Yeah, I think a lot of, for the many, many years, uh, we talked about this off camera that, you know, Mike Tyson, unfortunately, um, has not had the pleasure of being humanized. People always looked at him as this machine or an animal. And so with other boxers, you know, um, they've been able to see their humanistic side um, and not just see their rage. And I think a lot of people, when they think of Tyson, when they look at him, they only see rage as opposed to a whole human being who has a loving family, you know, loving wife, loving children. And, you know, he just wants the best for himself and for his family. So that's the unfortunate part, but... I'm really sorry to go back to the monkeys, but that facility houses 7,000 animals or monkeys, 7,000 monkeys. Why do you, who approved that? I don't know. This is the stuff you need to be voting for, Carolina. I think they breed the monkeys to sell to science facilities for research. A monkey farm? That's horrible. 7,000? That's Planet of the Apes right there. I don't trust that. And then the, I guess the company said, oh, we're not surprised that they snuck out of that door that was left unopened. These monkeys are very curious. So you're... Okay, curious fucking George. (laughs) Curious fucking George. (laughs) I don't like that. That's horrible. I don't like that either. Mm -mm. I still haven't watched that monkey documentary on... Which one? HBO. Have you watched it? Which one? It's like... um tiger king but for monkeys i mean i've seen the one with the um the famous lady jane is it jane i think her name is jane Jane. is it the the gorillas yeah with the gorillas and stuff no this is different this is chimp crazy no it's really good but it's about like exotic animals Mm -hmm. and these monkeys go crazy and like rip people's faces off and shit yeah because they're (laughs) Hey. they're wild animals hey. they're not people who be having these goddamn monkeys as pets and shit they, that's like having a lion as a pet that's stupid yeah like look at this lady and her monkey that thing it is waiting just like a boa constrictor to rip your fucking face off he just looks like he's thinking real thoughts i don't know why people like there are so many people in the world and i think this lady got attacked by her monkey and she's sitting up posing with it like it's ay, ay, ay. you see but i'm, I'm t- let me tell you something one thing i know about white people they are not afraid of black people. Okay. That's bullshit. These people will have tarantulas, poisonous tarantulas. Mm-hmm. They jump off cliffs. They got chimpanzees for fucking pets and shit. And you got the nerve to try to grip your purse when I come close to you in <laughs> the goddamn store. Ma'am. Ma'am. Uh, I heard this lady say on TikTok today, she was like, white women, you are the danger that you are afraid of. Okay. Mm-hmm. You are that part. You are that. Anywho, um, I tell you who's not that, Whoopi Goldberg. Whoopi Goldberg actually came out with a, um, she launched a, it's called uh, All Women's Sports Network. That's cool. Where literally it will play nothing but women's sports. If whatever sport it is, if it got women to it, she will. If a woman's it. playing it. You're doing it. I love that. That's I how you that use too. your power. I can't believe no one's done that yet. Oprah should have did it. Yeah. But anyway, she wanted to do own. <laughs> I mean, own was a, is great. I mean, yeah. it was. I don't know what it is now. She sold it, which I think she should. Can't should've. wait for women's sports to be on the up and up for yeah. real angel reese actually just uh launched a campaign with Reese's species yet again uh she's on a cereal now, on their cereal box wow yeah good for her mm-hmm. sid colson actually just came out with a shoe um we're still waiting at you know just sitting and waiting for asia uh wilson's shoe to come out it better look good i'm gonna be pissed if it's ugly <laughs> it won't i'm gonna be. be pissed yeah here on this podcast we support women yes we in do sports absolutely both absolutely. sporty women for sure sporty women uh anything else we can talk about before we get out of here what have you been watching? Uh, actually, nothing. Just Lioness. I'm trying to finish that up. And the Penguin. Great show. Is Lioness one or two seasons? Lioness just started the second season. Oh, because I got time to catch up. Yeah, okay, cool. you got a lot of time. Yeah. Um, Penguin is still good. It's If you're watching it, you already love it. So. That's cool. I've yeah. just been watching Equalizer and Grey's Anatomy, per usual. Per usual. There's a bunch of fucking Christmas movies that they just dropped on Netflix. <sighs> I, I know. I hate Christmas movies. God, dog, I hate there's Christmas something movies. about I used to hate them, but now there's something about it where I'm like, makes me a little cozy. The, mm-hmm. world, the world's so crazy. Sometimes you just got to put on a shitty 
Hallmark movie. They just all in the same way. Right. That's what's nice is you don't have to guess. There's no wondering or guessing. It's just going to work out. It's, it's like a so nice little. Cheesy. It's like watching like a USA show or TNT show. You're like, okay, at the end of this episode, everything's going to be okay. I hate it. Okay. But well. th this is why I hate Christmas time. Just because specifically for Hallmark. I just, oh. I hate those movies. They're so cheesy. I talk a lot of shit too. I hate them, but some of them. Bullshit! Well, you watch them all the time. Well, no, my mom watches them, and I make fun of them. But some of them are good. They're not. They're all Sweet Home Alabama. Oh. Hey, that is a great film. No, it is. Oh, Br Brie, why do you want to marry me anyhow? So I can kiss you anytime I want. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Sounds like it. Uh, <laughs> Princess Diaries three. Fuck yes. It's coming out. Hell oh, yeah. It's We're coming. getting a Princess Diaries three. We're getting a Freaky Friday two. I'm yes. living for everything. Wicked comes out this month. I've never liked Wicked. Really? No. Okay. People are saying that weird things, but never mind. I won't even bring it up. Uh, it it seems like it's a good movie. Okay. But I, I've never liked the contrast of, you know, the good and the bad. Which, eh. mm. leave leave it on the Wiz or the Wizard of Oz. I don't like. I don't need to know about y'all personal lives. <laughs> as witches. <laughs> Who needs a backstory? Nobody needs a backstory. All right. Well, Not for me. That's all I got. Gladiator for came out as well. Oh, I, I want to see, see Gladiator too. Denzel looks. Amazing. Great. I heard that. I cannot wait for Piano Lesson to come out on Netflix. It comes out on November 22nd. Actually, this week. Did I tell you that I watched that Andrew Garfield, Florence Pugh movie? No. We Live in Time. Uh -uh. Bitch, it was sad. I don't want to watch it. I'm it was sad. That. Also, too, um, uh, there was a, there's a rumor. Well, actually, it's not a rumor. I heard a rumor. It. He said that uh, he gonna, he's going to, Ryan Coogler, him and Ryan Coogler are going to be working together on Black Panther 3. Oh. Do you yeah. think Denzel will be a villain? I would love that. Probably so. I would love. I don't, I don't see him so. coming in as like Wakanda adjacent. I see him yeah. coming in as a villain. He would be an amazing. I villain. need more John David Washington. That's what I want. He's in piano lesson. Oh, because his son. What, what's his other son's name? The one that's the director. He directed piano lesson. John oh. David stars in it, and then Pauletta Washington and Denzel are both uh, executive producers of the movie. Cute. Is it Malcolm Washington? Uh, Malcolm Washington. Michael, yeah. So he directed piano lesson, and then John David is starring in it, and then um, they Pauletta all and, look alike. All of his kids are in the industry. That's really cool. And the way that they talk about oh. their mother is beautiful. I agree. It's like it's like Denzel ain't did shit. <laughs> they're like Pauletta. Like, I am Pauletta. They're like son. Uh, we, she is an artist and she chose motherhood and she is amazing. And who's that man over there that I'm named after? <laughs> yeah, I've, it's like a household where they all gave him shit. Like yeah. they're like, oh, everyone out there probably thinks you're cool, but in this house, you ain't shit. Go get the trash, man. Yeah. <laughs> You're I just my that. daddy. Yeah, he's definitely probably humble uh, in his household. Yeah. Now, apparently, that. she, uh, Pauletta Washington was a child prodigy. Really? Yeah, she plays the piano, classically trained. Wow, I would love, mm -hmm. that's like my dream blunt rotation, that family. Blunt rotation? What does yeah, that mean? you know, people say that, like, what's your dream blunt rotation? Your dream dinner party, like. That sounds like you're trying to say, like, you want to smoke with them. Yeah, like, your dream blunt rotation is, like, the five people you'd want smoking a blunt with you. It's like your dream blunt rotation. Um. My dream dinner party guest, whatever. Mm, okay, that sounds cool. Anyway, sorry, I'm a child of the internet. That's no, no, all. You're fine. I'm not watching anything else. All right, y'all. Well, y'all have an amazing week on purpose. Uh, we don't have anything else to talk about. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you for your patience as well too, <laughs> with us coming back. Uh, we will be back. Huh. We will be back with another brand new episode next week for y'all. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Y'all remember. Y'all have a great week on purpose. Y'all remember to spread light. Spread light. And don't forget to, to laugh, laugh your, your face, face off. off. And if you say something about my hair, you're anti-black. I haven't washed it yet. That's all the like. <laughs> Pippi Longstocking coming into your world. She's the freckle Fraser redheaded girl. Yeah, what I know. I can't remember the rest of her. That was a throwback. <laughs> Pippi. I was going to say, do you remember Pippi Longstocking? I had the cartoon. It's an actual, well, yeah, but that was an actual movie. Oh, yeah. yes, but I remember the cartoon. The cartoon, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, okay. Thanks so much for tuning in to another episode of The Face Off with Fleming and Fowler. Don't forget to follow us on all our social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at The Face Off Pod. Be sure to tune in to The Face Off every Tuesday where new episodes are released.